Police, the Service to Veterans Award. The award is presented to an individual or group who has performed exemplary service in support of the livelihoods of all veterans. The certificate reads, Joyce and Kevin Lucy are the parents of Corporal Jeffrey Lucy. On June 22, 2004, Jeff Lucy hanged himself. This combat war veteran could not be saved by his dad, Kevin, who was a clinical social worker, or by his mom, Joyce, who was a registered nurse. In the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, they've been instrumental in having state veteran services recognize the psychological issues faced by veterans. This has led to the creation of SAVE, Statewide Advocacy for Veterans Empowerment Program, that was dedicated to their advocacy and to Jeff's memory. In 2007, the Lucys filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the Department of Veterans Affairs, which was, which was subsequently settled out of court. The Lucys have grieved actively through their advocacy and activism. They are an example to other military families and peace activists around the world. I don't know what to say. Um, it's been a long six years, and everything we've done, I think we've had Jeffrey with us. I could never be here speaking if I didn't have Jeffrey helping me. And I think, like I had said at Winter Soldier, his voice is silenced, but ours isn't, and it's not going to be until the wars are over. no more of our young people on foreign soil fighting for wars that shouldn't be and our young people coming back like Jeffrey did struggling with the emotional cost of this war and having no help not knowing what to do we'll keep fighting until we can do something about that which is one of the reasons we did do the um, lawsuit to the VA because somebody's got to be held accountable you know, when, um, I'll let my husband take over. I'm... She's always like that. <laughs> but one of the things we do want to stress, if it wasn't for all of you, we wouldn't have had the strength to be able to do it. See, somebody has got to be there to listen to the story. And with the help of the military family speak out, who are brave families who have walked similar roads, and then with all of you, we can't thank you enough. And on behalf of our son and our family, we love you, we support you, and we'll be there for you. Iraq Veterans Against the War's third point of unity demands full benefits, adequate health care, including mental health, and other support for returning servicemen and women. It is a crime that many soldiers suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and other mental health conditions have to fight to get their conditions recognized by the military. They are returning home to grapple with unemployment, homelessness, substance abuse, and even suicide. He um, standing by the refrigerator, and he grabbed his dog tags, and he tossed them to her, and he called himself a murderer. We were um, to find out that these dog tags included two Iraqi soldiers that he feels, or he, he knows, he's personally responsible for their deaths. His private therapist, who saw him the last seven weeks of his life, said he didn't, he didn't wear them as a trophy, but he wore them to honor these men. Yeah. One of them being just before he was going to tell her about the bumps in the road, the children they were told not to stop their vehicles for and just not to look back. In their records, they say the grandfather pleaded for someone to help his grandson. Neither our veterans nor their families should ever have to beg 
for the care they should be entitled to. My child was struggling to survive, and we didn't know who to turn to. There was no follow-up call from the VA, no outreach, though they knew he was in crisis. We had no guidance. What to say to him, how to handle his situation. You hear a lot about supporting our troops, but I'll tell you, we felt isolated, abandoned, and alone. While the rest of the country lived on, going to Disney World, shopping, living their daily lives, our days consisted of constant fear, apprehension, helplessness, while we watched this young man being consumed by this cancer that ravaged his soul. The words to a song that he listened to over and over again described him. Whatever happened to the young man's heart, swallowed by pain as he slowly fell apart. At about 11.30, quarter 12, Jeffrey asked me for the second time within the past 10 days if he could just sit in my lap and I could rock him for about, well, for a while, and we did. We sat there for about 45 minutes and I was rocking Jeff and we were in total silence. As his private therapist that we had hired said, it was his last harbor and his last place of refuge. The next, more, the next day I came home, it was about quarter after seven. I held Jeff one last time as I lowered his body from the rafters and um, took the holes from around his neck. 